Howdy, 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 everybody. Welcome to the first video on Kerbal Space Program. My name is Patient Zero. Now, we're going to do a tutorial on something called asparagus staging. Now, asparagus staging is this wonderful little trick that we can do in Kerbal Space Pro Program. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, there's this. It's an amazing thing in Kerbal Space Program that allows you to use so much more in the game. Like, when I first learned how to use it uh, quite a while ago, um, it greatly expanded the number of places that I could go and the number of things that I could explore, and it made the game a much bigger and better experience. So I figured to start things off on this channel, things are still really new. There's no one here currently, because this is my first ever video. <laughs> Just a little secret between you and me. And, uh... <clears throat> So, without further ado, let's get into the game. I'm gonna resume saved. Also, my frame rate is garbage. Let's, uh... Hopefully I don't have that problem for too long. Reloading. So, hi. I'm, I'm Patient Zero. It's nice to meet you. I'm really glad that you're here today. Seriously, it's, it's kind of nice, even though I'm sitting alone here in my room. With Tyrion, actually. I mean, he's my friend, kind of. Not really. Is that weird? Shut up. Don't, don't bother me. Shh. Okay. So, let's get in and learn about asparagus staging. Okay, so here we are. We're going to need a command pod. Just, you know, standard command pod. <clears throat> let's see. Just get some standard stuff on there. If you've played Kerbal Space Program before, this will be really boring. If you've never played Kerbal Space Program, this might be uh, useful information to you. I don't know. I'm just doing whatever. Uh, okay, so let's see. Okay, so here we have a standard rocket. Now, this by itself is not going to go very far, so what we're going to do is we're going to add... Oh, excuse my voice cracking there. What? Mm. Um... So what we're going to do is we are going to take this to the next level. We're going to put a multiple of two worth of decouplers. Put some fuel tanks on there. Now, most people can get to this stage by themselves. It's pretty it's a pretty simple concept to have two different stages. Um put some engines on there real quick. It's pretty simple to have this, and this is where most people would stop. But here's how asparagus staging works. Asparagus staging takes fuel from sets of two fuel tanks on the outside that are on opposite sides of the rocket, and feeds them into the next um, tank in sort of a circular pattern and it spirals in and so each tank is fueling each other tank and everything is flowing towards the middle so that when you have used up all of your tanks you have a single rocket that's completely full uh, you know way up in the atmosphere I'll, it'll make sense when I show you um, but that's kind of a shitty explanation of what's going on uh, okay so the first thing that we're gonna need to do which is very, very important to asparagus staging, is we're going to need to divide our outside fuel tanks into groups of two so that we can separate them in groups of, in groups of two when they run out, because they're not going to run out of fuel all at the same time with this method of staging. Um, so because we have six uh, fuel tanks, we're going to have three additional stages um, or two additional stages, three in total for our separation for asparagus staging. Um, we're going to put them into groups of two and put them in different groups uh, or different separatory. <laughs> Something that is important to mention um, while I'm doing this is um, it's kind of hard to uh, get these grouped into the right uh, groupings, so my method is to always start with outside on my left and start with this particular one and then group this decoupler here so you'll see it down here, it's highlighted with 
this one there. See how when I hover over them, it highlights in white over the stage that I have there? And now I'm just highlighting the next one in line, and the next one in line adjacent, or like on the opposite side, so that the opposite sides are grouped together. And there we go. So now we're almost done. We have one more step to go. Uh, and it's a simpler step than what we just did, so uh, it's not that big of a deal. So what we're going to need is we're going to need the external fuel duct. Now, and there's something very important about doing this. Um, you need to make sure that you are only placing one at a time, because it needs, because uh, if you place them, uh, you know, in a sequence like we did with these, then they're just going to flow in a circle and it's not going to work properly. Um, so make sure that you have it down to your symmetry mode is just in single. Then you start with your first one, your first decoupler. Uh, we're going to divide these into groups of two, and I'm going to explain what that is in here in just a second. I'm going to pla place this one from here to here. I'm going to take one more, place it from this one to the next one. Now we have half of our tanks uh, connected, so we have fuel flowing from here to here, and then from here to here. And now what we're going to do is take another duct, place it here, and then have it move into the central fuel tank. And then we're just going to follow that same pattern around with the other three fuel tanks. Then on the third one, make sure that these actually, you know, full, uh, flow into the fuel tanks that they should. Okay, so what we have is this interesting little symmetrical body of um, fuel tanks and fuel lines flowing one from the other. So now what we're going to do is we're going to launch this bad boy. Um, 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 just gonna get it off the ground. Oh, and um, one thing about Kerbal Space Program, struts always and forever use struts to the maximum that you possibly can because it'll keep everything stable. Just a little piece of information. So, here we go to launch. Oh man, I was getting in the groove of that. Okay, so let's... Daytime. God damn it, Patient Zero. You're missing jokes. F messing up already for the wonderful nobodies out there. Like, you're not nobodies. There's just no one out there currently. Hopefully there'll be some people, but currently there's not. So, hopefully you get what I mean. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to do some final adjustments to our staging out here on the launch pad. We want all of our engines to fire at once, and we want all of our separators to separate at once, and then we have all these decouplers set to be in sequence. Um, so we're going to put on our SAS, throttle up, and three, two, one, bueno. <laughs> Now notice how there are sets of two that are moving at equidistant rates. That means that the ones that the ones that are first in sequence are putting their fuel into all the other fuel tanks, and then the second one in sequence are pouring into the remaining fuel tanks. So it's using them in sequence. Now, when this set of two runs out, I'm going to decouple these. Now we've set it up so that these decouple the ones that are running out of fuel the fastest, so everything uh, is as light as possible as we move up through the atmosphere. So, I'll show you what a decoupling looks like. Engines are off, decouple. Now notice how when I decouple them, 
everything moves back to full. This is one of the interesting things about asparagus staging, is that once you've run out of fuel in those tanks, all the rest of your fuel tanks are completely full. That's how the fuel injection, you know, tubes work. So, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful little way to make rockets that are really efficient, and you can make them on a large scale, you can make them on a small scale like this. It's really good for making landers and making interplanetary stages that are that require you to move a long distance and require you to be efficient. So, uh, I hope this, uh, this thing has been helpful to you. Um, we'll burn this out and get it all the way up to its full apoapsis so you can see how far this little baby can go. Um, and I might throw in some comparative footage of like the non-asparagus staged version of this so you can see how big a difference it is. It's really significant. Woo! Explosion. Hmm. Wouldn't be Kerbal Space Program without a couple explosions. That doesn't look like what you think it looks like. Dick jokes. Because the internet doesn't like dick jokes, does it? I mean, come on, right? Moving on to closer to our last stage. B -b 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 -b. Been recording for 13 minutes already. Wow, this episode's going. I like it. Feels very natural. It's very comfortable. It's good. I like it. Okay, so this is important information. So, um, we have a completely full single rocket up here at 40,000 meters, and we're still going to go for a long ways. We may even be able to get out past the moon or moon, or however you decide to pronounce the U in M-U-N. Uh, let's go into our map and see what... See it? Yeah, just growing like crazy. Already at 200,000. It's our rate of consumption. Wow, you see, yeah, five point, yeah. It's, I mean, that's not important information now, but it's pretty great to have a rocket of this power up here at this altitude with this delta v it's pretty incredible um, delta v meaning the change in my velocity it's i'm going faster um, See, the first time I tried this, this blew my mind, because I was having trouble even getting to 100,000 meters. Like, I was building big-ass rockets that would be like, whoa, you know, off the launch pad, and it'd be ridiculous and explodey all over the place. But it wouldn't go very far, and it was always frustrating, because I could never leave orbit, or, you know, leave the, the this planet, whatever it is, Kerbal, Kermin, I think. Kermin, yeah. Um, we can check, actually. Oh, oh shit! Uh, Okay, so, um, we still have fuel left, and we have <laughs> officially left the orbit. Uh, excuse me, that's gross. Uh, Kerbin, there we go. I don't know why I can never remember its name. Alright, well now that we're all out of fuel, we can just sort of... Okay, and... Gauge our little... Parachute. Enjoy the sights as we come back down into the atmosphere. Which will be in three. Two. One. Now. And yay, our altimeter is starting to drop. <sighs> well, this has been fun, hasn't it? Or maybe it hasn't. I have no idea. Been fun for me. I've enjoyed myself. Which is nice. Me and Bob. Me and Bob, best buddies. Nice use of alliteration there, Mr. Zero. <laughs> it's 
such a slow extension of the parachute, just pew! Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Let's get a good look at this super spot, supersonic dropping rocket. Supersonic dropping rocket. Supersonic dropping rocket. I can't speak. That's okay. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. There it goes. Okay, well that has been a short introduction and really terrible tutorial on how to do asparagus staging. I hope that anybody who comes across this video finds it useful enough to uh, expand their experience in this in the world of Kerbal Space Program. And when I say world, I mean of course solar uh, solar system, the planets, whatever. And we survived. Good job, Bob. So, oh shit, gotta walk all the way back in this heavy ass gear. God damn it. <laughs> uh, look, this is not the face of mercy whatsoever. Bob's like, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> oh, what a funny little girl. I hope to see you in videos to come. Until then, patient zero. Out.